Welcome to the Mousetrap Car build video. Here is a brief list of some of the parts that you're going to need for this build. You will need a mousetrap, the Victor brand of mousetrap specifically, balsa wood, I'm using quarter inch by quarter inch, hot glue, or you can also use super glue if you wish, CDs, a CD axle hub, the CD inserts, the axle material, small wheels, string, gears, small washers, a small binder clip, axle retainers, which are actually just tube segments, and a small cup. As far as the tools that you'll need, I recommend a drill, preferably a drill press if you can get one, drill bits, pliers, a razor knife or hacksaw, blue tape, and some scissors. Now on to the video. Hello, SecMe. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a sample mousetrap car that would be an acceptable entry into the Secme Olympiad. This one is going to follow all the guidelines in the survival guide and would be acceptable to compete. However, it's not necessarily the best design. There are other designs that you could use that might be better, but this is just one example. So what we're going to start off with is uh, some balsa wood here. This is quarter inch by quarter inch balsa wood. Now I've already cut these into uh, the proper length. So each one of these is 30 centimeters in length. So the first thing I need to do is take two of these and glue them together. Now I'm using hot glue for the purposes of this demonstration, but you could also use super glue, which would also be very good for building mousetrap cards because uh, it dries really quick and um, is really strong. This stuff is pretty good for that, except that it's not quite as strong. If you're working with uh, younger students, then the hot glue might be the way to go as opposed to using um, super glue because you definitely have to use lots of supervision with the super glue. All right, so I've glued those together. So now it's double width here. And the glue sets up pretty quick there. You can kind of um, rub the side here to get the excess glue off, but you want to make sure that's solid before you move on. All right, make sure both of them are uh, very well glued together. All right, then once you have the two frame pieces glued together like this, I'm going to take both of them side by side and I'm going to line them up like this and I'm going to tape them together. So the reason we're taping them together is so that when I drill the holes through here, the hole is going to be even throughout both pieces of the frame. Okay, so I have some tape right here. Okay, so now my two frame pieces are taped together. Now what I need to do is measure out where my holes are actually going to be drilled into the frame. So this particular design has them in specific places. So I'm going to show you where those are. Uh, first, we need to make sure that we're drilling the correct side here. So I'm just going to put a little mark on there with an X on the tape so that I know that's the side that I want to drill through. Yeah. 
Okay, this is the side I want to drill through. <clears throat> so I'm going to mark these at one centimeter from the end for the front wheel. So I have my ruler here. So if, we this, if this is the front of it, I'm going to put a little mark right there that I know that's where I'm going to drill for the front wheel. For the back wheel, I'm going to make uh, one hole that's going to be two centimeters from the end. So I'm going to measure out two centimeters right there and put a little mark. And for the third hole, now this one, what you need to do is find your gears and you're going to measure the distance from the center of the gears to the center of the other gear. All right, so here you can see my gears that I'm going to be using. So what I want to know is what is the distance between the center of this hole and the center of this hole. That is the distance that you're going to measure onto the frame for the second hole in the rear. All right, so let's go ahead and measure that right now. I'm going to put the gears together. Make sure you stick them together pretty, pretty good. And I'm going to bring my ruler in here and measure that in centimeters. So from the center of the hole to the center of the other hole, it looks to be about um, 2 point call it 2.6 2.6 centimeters okay 2.6 centimeters so what that means is I made my first mark here right here two centimeters from the end this is the back of the frame so now I said that the gears are going to be 2.6 centimeters apart from center to center so from this mark I need to measure 2.6 centimeters away from that and then make my third hole, or actually my third mark, where I'm going to make the third hole at 2.6 centimeters. Okay? So what I've got now is the frame taped together. I've made my mark for the front wheel, for the rear wheels, and then for what I call the drive axle. This is where the gears are going to be mounted. Okay? So let's go ahead and drill those out. Now, the best way to do this is if you have a drill press. Now, I don't have a drill press with me today, so I'm going to be very careful of how I'm going to drill through this. Again, I want to go through the side that uh, is glued together, not the side that's just taped together. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Now, you're going to drill directly through where you made those marks, right in the middle, right in the middle of those because, again, it's glued. And you want to make it as straight as possible through each piece of frame. So I want this, I want the drill to be at a 90 degree angle to the surface of the frame. Okay, so let's go ahead and drill that out. Okay, so I have one hole there. Now I'm experienced at using a drill, so I'm kind of doing this in midair. Um, but it's recommended that you put this flat on the table and drill through and have something to protect the table underneath. You don't want to be drilling into your table, your desk, or anything. Um, I'm going to do this midair because, well, I can do that. Oops. All right, so here's a good example of why a drill press would be a good thing. So I try to drill right into the middle, but it actually wandered a little bit and drilled to the bottom here. Now that's not critical because it's the same on both sides, but you want to make it as close to the middle as you can. This time I am going to drill down this way because I can hold it better. All right. So now I've got my frame pieces drilled for the size axle that I'm going to be using. Now, just a quick word on that. The particular drill bit that I used was the correct size for the pieces of axle that I'm going to be using, which happens to be a 1 8 inch axle 
pieces here. If your axles are going to be thicker than that, then obviously you have to adjust your drill bit size to be large enough. So I'm just do, going to do a quick test fit like this just to see that uh, it fits in there and it turns real nice. So it's it's pretty good right there. there there's some. It could be a little bit bigger, but for the most part, it's it's pretty good in there. All right, so those work. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and remove the tape. And so now I've got my two frame pieces with the holes drilled in the wide edge, and uh, they're ready to go. Okay. And you want to make sure you kind of keep them oriented the same way so that your holes still line up. So I'm going to put another little X right on the top here of both pieces so that I know that those are both the tops, okay? So that when I put them together, I know that they have to be oriented that way, okay? All right. So the next thing you want to do is um, glue your mousetrap on there. But before we do that, we need to prepare our mousetrap. So here is the acceptable mousetrap to use. This is a Victor model mousetrap. And this is the only one that's acceptable to be used. Um, it specifies that in the guidelines that it must be a Victor brand. Notice that it has only one spring. Um, there are some other brands of mousetrap that have two small springs, and that would not be acceptable. That would get you disqualified at SECME. So make sure that you're using the Victor brand of the mousetrap. All right, so now to prepare this, what I'm going to do is take my, um, I have needle nose pliers here, and there's a few pieces that can come off of this. All right, so I'm going to take out this little wire here. So this piece right here, this is the, uh, the bale trigger. All right, you don't need this piece. This has no bearing on what we're going to be doing with the mousetrap. So I'm going to carefully pull this little ring out, okay, and I can just set that aside. We don't need that. Likewise, I don't need this part here. This is the actual uh, bait lever, okay? So we don't need that one either. So we're going to remove that one as well. And you want to be very careful when you do this so that you don't break the base of the mousetrap. Okay, so now I put that aside. So now I've got just the mousetrap itself with the spring. Which this is called the bale, and the spring still in, intact. Okay, so that's ready to go now. Okay. Now what I want to do is line this up such that the mousetrap is at the correct position here. Now once I glue the mousetrap onto my frame, it's going to hold everything in place and make it so that it, that it works correctly. Now a, a trick to do this to make sure that this is all straight is I'm going to put in one of my axle pieces here and that way I can kind of see that they're actually straight because what happens is you don't want this to be like at an angle see how that's not a 90 degree angle there like this okay see how it flexes like that you want to make this as close to 90 degrees as possible and with the exact width of the mousetrap apart all right the mousetrap is going to be going on this like like that so now the place where you want to put the mousetrap 
on your frame actually um, really just depends on how you want your car to look and where you're going to put your things, okay? So this is, again, this side is the rear of mine. This is the front of mine. Um, I want my mousetrap somewhere right about here, all right? Because uh, you know that for this particular year, we're going to uh, have to put a mechanism on our mousetrap car that's going to be able to carry a golf ball. So I'm going to be using this clear cup, and I know I want to glue that right here on the front of the frame. So I don't want that to be interfering with my mousetrap. So I want to make sure that this mousetrap is somewhere out of the way so I still have enough room for my wheels up front here. And you're not seeing this. I want to make sure I have enough room for my wheels up front here and enough room back here for all the gears and the wheels and so on. Okay? So this length here, if I put it right about there, um, it looks to be about eight and a half centimeters away. So that's that's a pretty good spot to put this in. Okay? So now I'm going to go ahead and glue this up. With that, I'm going to make sure that my frame is straight. Something else about the mousetrap itself. Make sure you orient your mousetrap in the correct direction. Okay? So you want it to be able to be pulling on the string when it's wound up. So right now, it's in the relaxed position. All right? When I wind it, I want my mousetrap to be pulling opposite. All right? So you see how this V is pointing to the front here? I'm actually going to want to turn this around. So this is going to be the wound position. And as it's moving, it's going to be pulling this way, which means it's going to pull from the rear of the mousetrap. All right? So don't glue this on backwards. Otherwise, that's going to make things difficult. All right, so let's measure that again because I said it was 8.5 centimeters away. All right, so I'll make a little mark there. All right, so I know I need to put it there. Eight and a half. It's also helpful to measure that on both of them. That way, you know it's exactly eight and a half, and your uh, frame will be square. Right. So I'm gonna put some glue on there. I'm gonna do one side first. And before I glue the other side, I'm going to make sure that this is still square. Okay, it looks good there. And then we'll put some glue on there. The nice thing about using the hot glue is it gives you a little bit of open time so that if you do need to make an adjustment, you can do that before the glue sets up can't really do that with super glue because pretty much you touch the two pieces together, they're glued. They're done. So make sure you're exactly knowing where everything needs to go. All right. So here's what I've got so far. I've got my frame with the mousetrap car on here. And again, I want this to be pulling this way. So when I wind it, I'm going to wind it up like this, and then the mousetrap is going to let go this way. And of course, I have my axle back here, and I want this to be as at a 90 degree angle with my frame. Okay, this has to be straight at 90 degrees with the frame; otherwise, it's it's going to bind. It's not going to be good. Okay. All right. So now this is this is pretty durable, like this. It's it's good. So now we're going to work on the axles. So the axle pieces that we're going to use, like I said, I'm using. Uh, this stuff here, this is 1 8 inch, uh, I believe these are bamboo, yeah, these are bamboo skewers. You can kind of see it's a sharp point here. This is actually uh, in one of the aisles at Publix. He uses for like shish kebab or something like that. But we're going to use it as an axle because they're nice and they're smooth and they're relatively easy to work with, okay? So my two axles, actually my three axles, I have on here I have my front axle, I have my drive axle that's already there, and then I'm going to have my wheel axle, which is way in the back here. Um, 
you want to measure those out to just slightly wider than the frame. Okay, so again, my frame happens to be, uh, we'll call it 4.6 centimeters. Okay, so I want them to be slightly wider than that, but not too wide. Um, I want to have enough room to put the wheels on and on the axles, but not too much room. So I think I'm going to make mine six and a half centimeters long. Okay, so I'm going to measure out six and a half centimeters. On here, I'm going to put a little mark. Okay, so this is going to be my front axle. Now I'm using a hacksaw like this, uh, but if you're using a razor knife, that's fine as well. Just make sure you have something to saw on so that you're not chewing up the table that you're working with. going to be my front axle. So I'm going to get my wheels. These are the wheels that I'm going to be using. These are from Kelvin uh, that you can order them kelvin.com. Uh, but I like them because they already have a hole in here that is exactly the eighth inch diameter of the axle that I'm using. So there's really nothing to do with these. I don't have to modify them in any way. What you also want to do is put, uh, before you put the wheels on, right? So I'm actually going to take my axle and I'll insert it in one side. Now, if you want to glue these up from here, you can, but I don't recommend it because it's going to be a kind of a tight fit anyway. And in case you need to take the whole thing apart, if you glue the wheel onto the axle, it's not going anywhere. So that makes it difficult. I'm going to press that axle onto the, I'm sorry, the wheel onto the axle. And I'm going to use my small washers as part of the supplies that you need, just a small washer. This helps to reduce the friction. All right, so that's going to be between the wheel and the frame. I'm going to go ahead and put that one side in already. So you can see that the um, small washer is exactly between the wheel and the frame. So that way it gives a little bit uh, less friction there. All right. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to put the washer on like this. And then I'm going to press my wheel into place like so. This one's a little tight there, so I might need to adjust this a little bit. So it doesn't roll freely. You want it to be able to spin freely. So I might need to drill out those holes a little bit bigger, but um, that's something I can do later once I have the whole car built. Okay. All right, so now we're going to work on the uh, rear axle. This is what I'm calling the wheel axle. And this is actually going to be using the CDs. So um, I happen to have another piece here already uh, cut. And that's the same length as the other side. Now for the CDs, when we're going to use those, I have just old CDs like this. Um, you can also order at Kelvin. They come with these little CD inserts. Um, these fit nicely onto the axle. Uh, again, you've got your eighth inch hole there, and the center part fits very nicely into the CD. So I'm just going to press those in place, like so. I'm gonna squeeze that little hub in there. This yellow piece is actually a separate piece from there, but they were kind of stuck together. So now they're on there. So it's just in there. It's a perfect 
hub for the wheel. I'm going to pre prep the other side as well. I'm going to put that in there. You just snap right into place. Push that yellow piece in there. Okay. So now I've got my CD prepared with my hubs in there. So I want to take my um, axle piece and I'm going to press that in place in one side. Now, this one, it actually slides all the way through. Okay, It doesn't stop like on the front wheels here. So what I might need to do with this is to adjust the size of my axle, the length of my axle, because this is a little bit short. I'm going to go with a little bit longer of an axle. Actually, that was what this one was cut for earlier. So this one happens to be 8 centimeters long. Okay, so that's, I think, a better choice for, for our purposes here. So I'm going to put the axle into the hub like that, and I'm also going to get uh, two more of the washers. Now I happen to have um, these. These are plastic washers, but they'll work the same way and do the same thing, so it will be okay to use. So I want to put that on there as well, and what that's going to do is reduce friction between the frame and the hub here. Okay, so I want to put that one in, and I'm again I'm putting this into the rear holes that I drilled. I still have this hole here um, that's that's going to be ready to go. Okay, so I can go like that, and you can see that that's going to that's going to line up pretty well later. Okay. Now I'm not going to put this side on yet because I still need to mess with this particular what I call the drive axle. Now the drive axle does have to be shorter because you're putting stuff in the middle of this axle. You're not putting stuff uh, on the outside. So it really doesn't need to be much wider than your actual frame. Okay. So you can see how I'm, how I'm holding that there. It's a little bit long. So I'm going to cut off about a centimeter on this so that it's not sticking out on the sides. So I'm going to make a mark here. So I'm going to cut that one as well. So I have it much shorter now, and this is going to work for uh, this particular, what I call the drive axle. So that's going to go in there like that, and you can see that it doesn't stick out on the sides. Okay, it doesn't. It won't interfere with the rear wheel spinning. Okay, we just want this one in there like that. All right, but before I put that in there, I have to prep it. So what I want to do is to take my axle, my gears, and remember that uh, these things actually need to be attached to the drive axle. So I am going to tap, take that rear axle out a little bit. So I'm going to slide this one back out. So I'm going to put the larger of the two gears onto my onto my axle like this. Now I can kind of slide that through a little bit. Um, actually, yeah, before I do that. So another uh, good piece to have are these little pieces here. This is called an axle retainer. It's literally just a piece of tube that can go right onto your axle like this. And that's going to keep your axle from sliding back and forth sideways. All right, so I'm going to slide that in now. Okay, so there's that. Now what you want to do is to orient your gear all the way over to one side, but not touching the frame. Okay, so slide it over about that far, but not touching the frame. And I'm going to put a little dab of hot glue on both the inside of the wheel here, because I want it to 
drive with the axle. I want the, the gear and the axle not to move independently. Nice dab there. I'm also going to put a little dab right behind the axle retainer because, again, I don't want this thing to slide out. Okay, so we'll let that set up a second. Okay. Now I'll be able to slide my rear axle in. And before I put it in through the other side of the frame, I do want to put my small gear on there. And now I'll slide that through. And you can see that those gears, they line up pretty well. So they, they engage nicely with each other. So I want to do the same thing with the small gear, is I want to put a small dab of glue I'll have a glue on the inside of that gear. Again, I don't want it to move independently of the axle. Okay. So now you can see I have the uh, gears in place there. I have my small dab of glue in the middle here and this axle side is waiting for um, the other wheel now. So I'm going to go ahead and put on my little plastic washer here. And then I can press the other wheel right in place. Now again, these things don't necessarily uh, stay that that rigidly, so you might have to put a dab of glue. I actually put a dab of glue on the outside like this so that it stays where it's supposed to as well. Oops. You kind of want to squeeze those together a little bit, and you want to make sure that your gear, your rear gear here, is still lined up with the drive gear. So if it doesn't line up, then that's not going to work. that one off there. I need to put this in a little further. Here we go. But not too tight. You don't want to put it so tight that it's going to give you friction there. All right, so now I've got everything kind of lined up so that it's pretty tight there. Now I can put a little bit more glue on the outside here so that the wheels stay intact on, on the axle. Okay. So this is a, actually a, a good example here. You want to make sure that your measurements are very accurate because if your gears are a little too far apart or if you drilled your holes incorrectly, then your gears aren't necessarily going to mesh. And you can see that it doesn't always turn the other thing here. They're, they could be a little bit closer together. So I would have had to make that adjustment there. But for our purposes, for demonstration purposes, you get the idea that these are supposed to be meshed together very tightly, and uh, you know, 
not move independently of each other, but be engaged like so. All right, but you could still get the idea. All right, so my mousetrap car is coming together. Almost done. So now we're ready to attach the string to that. So when you are attaching the string, basically you only need as much that is going to be necessary to wind this. So you don't want too much on here because what happens is if you have too much string, then it can actually um, get caught up in the wheels as it disengages and then it's going to stop it. So you don't want that to happen. Okay, so you want enough slack in there to where you can tie some knots, but not so much where it's going to drag. All right, so just a little bit longer than uh, where we are here. All right, so what you want to do is um, you're going to be tying the string to the bale up front here and to the drive axle here, okay? So when you wind it then, the, the bale, as it unwinds, is going to be pulling on your drive axle here, and it's going to cause the rear wheels to turn, okay? So that's the way we want to wind it so that the wheels turn like this. And yeah, that's going to be a problem on mine because my gears don't mesh like they're supposed to. Okay. Now comes the fun part of trying to tie this stuff with a little string like this. So if you have uh, somebody that can tie for you, actually, you don't necessarily want to tie the, the rear one here because what's going to happen is if it's tied tightly, then um, it would actually start to, to drive and then it would cause the car to stop suddenly. So this one you want kind of want it to be just loose on there. You want it to be wound but not necessarily tight. Okay. So we're going to tie the first side here first. I'm just going to tie a regular knot. All right, I've got a nice little knot there. I'm just going to put a dab of hot glue right on the knot so that it holds it in place on the bale. Not too much, just a little bit. Incidentally, while I'm talking about the bale, the mousetrap car guidelines specify that the bale cannot be extended or modified in any way. The only thing that's acceptable is if you take this side that's attached to the spring, uh, spring axle here. If you take this side, you can straighten your bale. So you'd unbend this here, and unbend this here, and make it straight so it comes out to about here. That's the only acceptable modification you can do to, to the bale. You cannot add anything to it or uh, cut the end of it, anything, all right? So for our purposes, again, I just left it completely intact like this. This still works. Uh, it's fine. If you want to bring it out a little bit longer, you can do that. But again, that makes the, the torque that the spring has to engage on there a little bit harder because it's a longer lever. Okay, so just something to keep in mind. All right, now before I um, thread my string through again, I want to put a binder clip. So the binder clip acts as a just a guide for the string. And this is completely legal to do because you're not modifying the mousetrap car base. You are just putting that little binder clip on like that. That's going to act as a guide for the string. So you're going to wind that through, or push that through there. Okay. Now, this 
axle here, you want to make sure that your your knot on there is very loose. It should slide on here so that it's not uh, it, it won't stick to the axle and cause it to stop. So here's a, the challenge now. I'm trying to tie this. My big hands in the way. I just did a little half knot there, okay? But when I'm winding this, I'm going to pull mousetrap bail up like this to relieve the tension in there, and I'm going to turn the wheels backwards. That's going to cause this to wind like that. You can see that. Okay. All, right. All right, so the last step then is I need to be able to carry a golf ball with my mousetrap. So the design that I've chosen is I'm going to put this plastic cup right here on the front between the mousetrap and the front wheels. I'm going to kind of position this a little bit out of the way so that um, it doesn't interfere with the, the winding portion. So again, this year is for uh, it's carrying a golf golf ball will fit nicely into my little cup here, and I'm ready to go. Okay. Now, once again, this car isn't the best design. I won't say that this is a winning car. However, um, it does follow all of the guidelines for SECME. I'm using a standard Victor mousetrap. I have not modified the bail. I have the ability to carry a golf ball. I have at least three wheels. In this case, I have four. And uh, it's a relatively simple design using gears. So once you are to this point, now you can start to test your vehicle and decide, OK, do I need to decrease friction? So what would I need to do to decrease the friction? Do I need to drill out the holes bigger? Do I need to add some lubricant in there? You can do that as well. Um, do you want to change your gear ratios? So right now I've got this particular gear ratio, uh, the smaller to the, or the larger to the smaller, I believe it's a two to one gear ratio, but maybe you want to use a three or a four to one if you have those kinds of gears. So again, if you have any questions about how to do this or anything about the guidelines or anything, please feel free to email me uh, at any time. And I hope this was helpful. Thanks.